Hello everyone, nice to meet you. I'm Uk Chun Song, working at Seoul National University of Science and Technology, Seoul, Korea. Chapter 7 is about the management of government information resources. Through this lecture, learners understand the importance of information resources as the infrastructure to build an e-government and look into the main contents of information resources management in Korea. In this chapter, we will learn government integrated data center and G cloud, government wide enterprise architecture, public information sharing, open data and big data analysis, records management, and electronic signature certificate management system. I hope it will help you understand Korea e-government infrastructure. Then, enjoy the lecture. Thank you. The first topic to be introduced regarding information resource management is the integrated data center. After the administrative network was built in the 1990s, agencies quickly increased their information resources, such as servers. Moreover, the e-government projects that began in the 2000s rapidly increased these resources, and management costs were predicted to increase, necessitating integration of these resources for better management. Currently, the government integrated data center consists of two centers, Daejeon and Gwangju, and a third center is under construction in Daegu. The mission of Government Integrated Data Center is to provide quality ICT services leading the digital gov. The vision is professional institute providing intelligent cloud service. Core values are future, integrity, relationship, service, technology. Government Integrated Data Center has three strategies, future-oriented challenge and innovation, smart service based on digital technology, performance creation for client satisfaction. Finally, Government Integrated Data Center has five tasks. To complete intelligent cloud infrasystem, to fulfill all based cybersecurity management system, to upgrade operational system in whole, to innovate services to support digital gov, innovation, and to improve organization and enhance core competencies. The Korean government therefore selected innovation to efficiently manage the government-wide computing environment as one of the 11 key e-government projects and established the BPR slash ISP in 2004 to integrate its information resources. It had migrated the information systems of 20 central administrative agencies to the first government integrated data center in Daejeon by 2006. It had also migrated the information systems of 19 central administrative agencies to the second government integrated data center in Gwangju by 2007. The information systems of 47 agencies were migrated to two government integrated data centers by 2015. Cloud computing technology was introduced in 2012 to facilitate this allocation and collection after use of these resources. In 2017, 740 government projects will be switched to utilize the cloud service. Through the establishment and operation of the government integrated data centers, the monthly average system interruption time decreased from 67 minutes to 3.6 seconds. Moreover, joint purchases, deployment, and operation of information resources required by all government agencies reduced purchasing costs and operation and maintenance costs by 30%. Recently, data centers in Korea are evolving to G-Cloud as cloud data center. Korea's implementation of cloud policy began on full scale in September 2015 with the implementation of the world's first Cloud Computing Development and User Protection Act, the Cloud Computing Act in short. In November of that same year, five ministries jointly developed and announced the first basic cloud computing development plan. The National Intelligence Services G Cloud Service, NIRS, is a good example of an attempt to incorporate cloud computing into an administrative environment. In 2013, G Cloud Service was started. 
In 2017, Roadmap for Intelligent Cloud, iCloud, was completed. Until 2022, government will complete iCloud Computing Service. Currently, G Cloud services are provided by all government departments in Korea, including the Ministry of Education, such as National College Scholastic Ability Test, One Click Reporting on Education Expenses, etc., and Statistics Korea, such as Population Survey, Total Survey on Agricultural and Fisheries Industries, Basic Survey on Households, etc. The following figure lists some representative cases involving Statistics Korea and the Ministry of Education. The second topic to introduce regarding information resource management is the government-wide enterprise architecture. Continuous development of information systems by the government led to rapid increases in information resources to operate them, and thus their size and complexity also increased. Moreover, the interoperability between hardware and software was made insufficient, since several different information systems were constructed even within one institution. There were also problems of a lack of data standardization and of duplicate development of similar projects. These issues needed to be dealt with at the government-wide level. The Korean government therefore adopted EA, Enterprise Architecture, as a tool for this job. Therefore, as a planned IT management, EA has the following advantages. EA enables system development aligned with vision and biz requirements. EA ensures system integration and seamless information flows. EA minimizes redundancy in IT system investment. Enterprise architecture is a management system that identifies the informatization-related elements of an agency, such as its current tasks, tasks desired in the future, information systems and data, and sets down a comprehensive informatization design based on the mutual relationships among these elements from the perspective of the agency, as well as a system for managing informatization based on this design. Incorporating EA into the investment activities in informatization in the public sector can facilitate the effective management of the complex and vast information resources held by the agencies and induce the planned and systematic promotion of informatization through analysis of differences in statuses and goals. Therefore, EA is a framework and method to analyze and optimize organizations' components based on standardized rules and processes. The Act on Efficient Introduction and Operation of Information Systems was enacted in 2005, which mandated that public agencies adopt the EA, leading to a government-wide EA system in 2009. A government-wide EA portal was set up to prevent duplicate investment on e-government projects, to integrate and link the systems by government service, and to improve interoperability by sharing, analyzing, and utilizing the EA information developed by each agency. As of the end of 2016, 18,434 information systems and more than 330,000 information resources operated by more than 1,200 public agencies were registered in the government-wide EA portal. Public agencies must use EA to check for duplication, ensure feasibility, and review technology in advance when implementing e-government projects. Since 2008, all services provided by the government have been analyzed step by step. The analysis has drawn finalized models for the different services from the user's points of view rather than those of the service providers. Such finalized models are managed through the target architecture of pan-government EA, and each agency promotes its informatization projects aimed toward these models, thus accomplishing gradual area-specific integration. Also, EA led to a total budget reduction of 438.6 billion Korean won over the four years between 2009 and 2012. In recognition of the outcomes of the government-wide EA, it received a UN public service in 2013. Continuous efforts are still being made to improve service quality and transparent national informatization. 
The government-wide EA portal was integrated with the e-government advanced consultation system in 2014 for greater prevention of duplicate development of similar systems. The GEA portal enables real-time, government-wide information resource management. GEA portal provides information on all public agencies' IT resources at a glance. The third topic to be introduced regarding information resource management is public information sharing. A public information sharing platform is a service that allows a government employee in charge of providing a civil service to process the work involved by searching for and verifying the necessary information via the computer network without any need for document submission by the person who needs the civil service or another government agency that possesses the information. By enabling administrative agencies, public institutions, financial agencies, and educational institutions to share information and process the tasks electronically, the platform provides citizens convenience in filing civil petitions and using the civil service and permits the government to perform the related administrative tasks more effectively. Public Information Sharing Center provides customized service such as information inquiry service, information distribution, and electronic civil document management service. Information Distribution Service encrypts information to realize secure exchanges of information across agencies. Electronic Civil Document Management Service supports for completion of civil petitions without visits. When citizens prepare and submit documents needed to receive civil services or file civil petitions on the Internet, the service electronically documentifies the submitted documents or petitions and the responses of the agencies processing the requested services and issuing the documents. Public information sharing establishes a system for customized information retrieval. To enhance personal information protection, only the items of information in the required documents that are absolutely essential to the job are extracted and then provided on one screen. In addition, to prevent information leakage or misuse or abuse of information in cases of verification of people's military service or tax statuses, the service only verifies whether the information is authentic or not. The number of agencies using public information sharing has continually increased. All administrative agencies, 174 public agencies, 41 financial institutions, and 196 educational institutions use the public information sharing system. The fourth topic to be introduced regarding information resource management is open data and big data analysis. Korea's policy for the opening up of public data and promotion of its utilization was institutionalized through the Public Data Act in 2013. To create a pan-national data ecosystem, the government has steadily developed basic plans and corresponding policies for the past six years, 2014 to 2019, two three-year plans. As a result, Korea has ranked first in the OECD's Public Data Opening Index for the past three consecutive years, in 2015, 2017, and 2019. In addition, the opening up of public data has enabled an expansion in employment of 8,600 people at 545 companies, and the contribution to sales through public data opening has been 26.7%. In addition to this, the survey results answered by 679 numbers of companies using open data showed that open data has useful effects in various aspects, such as employment expansion, business expansion, new service development, and cost saving. In Korea, big data analysis based on data accumulated so far is attracting more attention than ever. The concept and use of big data began to be applied to Korea's e-government system when the Ministry of Interior and Safety reported to the president on a plan to implement smart government using big data in November 2011. Later, in April 2012, the government opened the Big Data Strategy Research Center under the National Information Society Agency. In July 2013, the government launched the first-ever Project to Establish Common Infrastructure for the use of big data 
and launch a pilot project. Conducted in 2014, this project executed a series of tasks, including the sophistication of the existing big data platform and storage and accumulation of big data for shared use, as well as 11 occasional analytical tasks. A high-capacity data storage system was built in such a way that various types of information, such as population movement, toxic substance of medicine, weather, and traffic volume information, can be accessed and used by various parties. Also, the collection of social media data in the private sector has increased dramatically, and data produced through simple statistical analysis, including spatial information-based analysis and online analytical processing, OLAP, analysis, have been added for real-time retrieval. By way of using the common big data infrastructure, central ministries and local governments now have the capability to analyze urgent social issues at any time. In addition, the launch of new pilot services has made it possible to provide various analysis-based services, including fire forecasting, smart disaster safety alerts, drug side effect information, personal information protection, and road risk forecasting. The fifth topic to introduce related to information resource management is records management. The National Archives of Korea, the central institution for records management, oversees the management of public records in Korea. As a permanent records management institution, the National Archives of Korea collects and systematically preserves major national records so that all citizens may utilize them easily and conveniently. To this end, the National Archives of Korea performs the following tasks. Collection and systematic preservation and management of records worthy of more than 30 years of preservation. Support for the realization of a knowledgeable information society through provision of its recorded information to the people. Upgrading of public records management systems and procedures in line with changes in the digital environment. In accordance with the Public Records Management Act, public records produced by public agencies are managed and transferred from a records processing division, records production stage, to a records repository, records management stage, and then finally to the National Archives of Korea, permanent preservation stage. This three-stage records management system operates through the utilization, respectively, of the Electronic Records Production System, as known as on NARA system, the Records Management System, RMS, and the Central Archives Management System, as known as CAMS. To build a future-oriented system for the nation's major records, Korea is aiming to achieve, first, cloud-based transformation of records management systems. It includes integrated records management governance of the Electronic Records Production System and Records Management System based on ICT technology. Second, Arrangement of the Electronic Records Management System. It enables arrangement to facilitate management of various types of electronic records, such as datasets, video records, etc., and prepare long-term preservation policies. Third, Restoration of Key Records. It enables restoration of damaged key records and records that are unrecognizable due to media transformation. The sixth topic to be introduced regarding information resource management is the Electronic Signature Certificate Management System. Traditionally, Koreans have used stamps or signatures in their processing of civil documents or in business transactions, and it is the same with electronic civil documents and business transactions. In 1999, before the Internet had become popularized, the government enacted the Digital Signature Act and the Framework Act on Electronic Commerce. The Digital Signature Act prescribes the Electronic Signature Authentication System for securing the safety and reliability of electronic transactions through identification of the transaction counterparties, the verification of electronic documents to check for forgeries or modifications, and the non-repudiation of the written documents. Compared to traditional identification methods based on user IDs and passwords, electronic signature certification is characterized by excellent security of personal information and a non-repudiation function in electronic business transactions. 
The use of electronic signature certification was thus made mandatory for Internet banking in September 2002 and for the use of the online stock exchange in March 2003. In 2005, a system was implemented for revitalizing the use of electronic signature certification for electronic transactions via credit cards. Since then, electronic signature certification has proliferated to all kinds of electronic transactions, including electronic civil petition filing, tax returns, and electronic procurement. In line with the increase in mobile devices and IoT, certification is utilized in building and operating the device authentication systems for identity authentication of various information and communications equipment, such as diverse devices and network cameras. Certain crucial systems had been protected only by usage of user IDs and passwords because the various administrative agencies or transaction systems used different user certificates and access management, and danger thus remained of exposures of important data while workloads were increasing as people needed to change their account and access information every time they changed positions during personnel reshufflings. Moreover, in order to alleviate the inconvenience of having to log on for every use of the e-government systems and to enhance reliability, the single sign-on, as known as SSO system, was established in 2009 for government services. In 2010, agencies systemized their single sign-on and accessibility management through the Integrated Accessibility Management System, which was Single Sign-On Gateway. Currently, the government is set to abolish the mandatory use of the Public Accredited Certificate of Authentication, which was introduced in 1999 in line with the Internet boom. It has been cited as one of the most outdated regulations in the financial industry due to its complex usage. The years-long controversy over the system ended in May 2020 when the National Assembly passed a revision to the Digital Signature Act. The rapid rise of biometric identification systems with higher security also boosted the discussion on the abolishment of the existing public system. Banks are moving to adopt fingerprint, face, or iris scan recognition systems for users to access their banking apps. A four-digit password system is also widely in use.